what is the revenue? So revenue is anything that you sell. You either sell goods, you sell service. If you are investment company, it will be the interest, royalty, and dividend. The key word here is ordinary cost, normal. That means the things that you are selling is not you sell your asset. It's not like you sell your car, you sell your factory. Uh, it must be normal everyday activity. So you don't sell your house every day, you don't sell your car every day, correct? No? So the things that you sell, the service that you sell, uh, or the interest royalty dividend that you get is the normal that you get every day. So of course, everybody of us here also receive interest, but do we receive it every day? No, we receive every year, right? One year, one time, we might receive some interest because we have some investment, correct? Mm -hmm. It's not talking about those interests. It's interest that I receive every day. So you must be an investment company in order to receive interest every day. Normal company doesn't receive interest every day, correct? So the keyword is ordinary. Okay, and ordinary means normal cost of activity. One day you receive four or five interests, four or five batches of interest. Okay, then that is normal. Okay, then you must be an investment company. Then those are your revenue. Okay, definition here is the same. You sell goods, you sell service. There is nothing to learn under initial measurement. Okay, How, what is your measurement? How much do you want to record your sales? How much you are selling, then you just record how much. Depends on your fair value. IFRS 13, you want to sell the product for how much? Uh, that is your selling price. Like, okay. So there is no issue here, follow your invoice. So normally when you want to sell something, you have a document invoice, right? Then you just follow that. So there is no issue here, you see, there's no explanation. No? The main part that the question is asking is the recognition. Because every standard, there are five components, remember? You have the definition. You have the recognition, initial measurement, subsequent measurement, and disclosure. Okay, disclosure we don't do. So subsequent measurement we don't have because revenue doesn't carry down. We don't carry forward our sales to next year. So there is no subsequent. There is, on, there is only first year because we record the sales, income, and expenses, right? We record them into our account and then, then just, just like that. We don't carry it to next year. So there is no subsequent. So among the four components, only recognition is the main highlight. No? When do I record sales? When should I record my sales? Okay. It's talking about a date. So remember the five steps model I told you. So let's go to step one. Are you okay? Okay, step number one is first of all, you need to decide the sales you want to park here. So maybe the sales is not even qualified to be parked under IFRS 15. So to qualify to park here is step one. Okay, you must have this contract and this contract must have these five characteristics. So if you fulfill these five characteristics, then it is a sales to park under IFRS 15. Then you can come here, you can continue step two, three, four, five. Okay. But if you fail, then of course it's not a sales. Then you don't come to this standard and park here no? and treat it here. Okay, the first one is when you sell, you must have a contract with the customer. And the, this contract will show that uh, both of you are committed. So there will be a buyer who say, I'm willing to uh, buy, and a seller who says, I'm willing to sell. Can. So there will be two parties, and these two parties will agree a transaction. Can. Then there is a sales. They must be committed to carry out the transaction. So both sign, no? willing to buy, willing to sell. Number B, the rights of each party. Okay, So maybe the buyer, what is the rights of a buyer? Buyer have the rights to receive goods. So in the contract, will, uh, it will indicate that, okay, this buyer uh, can uh, get uh, these goods at what time and can be delivered to his house, can get this product. So there will be a lot of rights the buyer can get. And the seller, what is the rights of a seller? Uh, rights to receive money. So 
So inside the contract, it will indicate that, okay, the seller can get the money. It's a cash on delivery. He can get the cash by today. Uh, you will see all these rights printed in the contract. Okay, then that will be a, a, a sales. No? How, do you, how does the customer pay payment term? So in the contract, you will write like, oh, it's a cash on delivery. It's an installment uh, to two years. Okay, every year, every month, he will pay 100. Or maybe it's a 30 days credit term. So you will see the payment term inside the contract. If you want to part under IFRS 15, the transaction must be real. Substance in accounting means real. It must be a real transaction. That means you must sell at normal price, at fair value. If you sell very low, lower than fair value, that means the sales is not real. Because how can you sell lower than fair value? Everybody is selling for fair value, but you want to sell very low than fair value. That means the transaction is not substance. Something is wrong with the transaction. Usually, this happens when you sell to your subsidiary. You sell to your related party, your relative. Okay? the relative of the company you sell to, like for example, you sell to your family member, normally it's cheaper. So the family member of the uh, of the company, right? For example, you sell to your supplier, your customer, you sell to your subsidiary associate, sell to your director, sell to the director, wife, okay, all these. Huh? Transaction is not real. The price is a bit funny. Okay? So uh, those are not revenue. It must be substance if it is revenue. Okay, the last one. The last one is quite interesting. You will park under revenue if you think you can be probable of collection. That means you must be more than 50% sure you can collect the money. You sell to this customer, you must be quite sure that you can collect back the money, not 100%. No? Of course, you can still become bad debts. But upon selling, you should be very sure that you can collect the money that only you will park under here. But when you want to sell to the customer, if you think at the beginning when you want to sell to the customer, you know that I'm not going to collect money. I sell to this customer, I won't be able to collect the consideration. And then that is not a sales. So what situation would, would you end up like that? Of course, can I ask you, if you know that you sell to this customer and this customer won't pay, Will you sell to this customer? Will you even sell? No, right? Okay. So of course, we don't have a sales at all. But how can I still sell to this customer? Even I know that he's not paying, but I still have to sell to him. In what situation? It's usually because you have signed a contract. A sales contract with this customer. You sign a contract with this customer and say, I want to sell to you. And then material price go up. Uh, sorry, the one material. Uh. After you sign the uh, after you sorry, after you have signed the sales contract with the customer, you realize that the customer uh, credit risk has become high. You realize that he can't pay you. You realize that suddenly his company is not doing well. It's a sudden thing. Uh, when you are signing the contract, you check this customer, everything is okay. He can pay. That's why you sign the contract and say you will sell to him. But after a while, you realize that his company situation is not doing so well, then he's going to go bankrupt soon. But you already signed the contract, say you will supply, you will, you will sell to him this quantity. So no choice. You either terminate the contract and pay penalty. If you don't want, then no choice. You have to just sell. Hopefully, he can pay you a little bit. But you are not probable anymore. Because the situation has changed. You are not very sure he can pay or not. So less than 50%. Then it's not parked here if in that situation. If you still have to sell because you want to fulfill the contract, then it won't be a sales anymore. So what is that? The standard says you will just put it as cost of sales. That means uh, you will just write it off as like stop loss. The stock still go up but you are just going to write it off like a stop loss because you don't think you can actually get back the money, like missing stock, but you just deliver to the customer. So the whole thing won't be parked here.
if you want to park here, it must be a normal situation. You are quite sure you can collect the money. Usually it's like that. Are you okay? So these are the five points, five points. Huh? So uh, for, for your revenue, so to help you to visualize a little bit, I will just uh, open this map for you to just visualize what you are doing. Maybe just share mine, share my screen. This is my IFRS 15 here. You are doing step one here, the map. These are the five characteristics of a contract. Okay, so if you fulfill these five characteristics, then only you can proceed to do your step two. Then only you can park under here. So these five uh, these five characteristics, can we highlight them? The first one is there will be two persons committed to carry out the transaction. There will be rights mentioned in the contract, payment term mentioned in the contract. It must be real as fair value substance and then you must be quite sure you can collect the money. Are you okay? Okay, so finish step one, we decided, okay, our sales is going to park under IFRS 15. Okay, let's go to step two. Okay, step two is, I think is the most important step in these five. These are, this is the most important, is to identify how many performance obligation inside the contract. Okay, what is a performance obligation? I call it the PO. How many PO is inside this contract? Okay, in another word, if I simplify it, is I want to cut how many pieces. So your package is like that. Do you remember a lot of businesses nowadays, they sell in a package. And inside this package, how many pieces are there? You want to cut into how many pieces? This is step two. Okay? Of course, if your step two, you cut it wrongly, you cut to the wrong pieces, then of course, you're, later you want to do your step five, right? You want to put them into goods or service, you will put them all wrongly. Then of course, all the numbers is wrong. Okay? So of course, this, not, this is the most important. No? Like you take a knife now, you want to cut, right? Okay, so how to cut them? Of course, you need to think how to cut. Okay, how to cut? It says you look at your bundle, you see how many PO are there. So my next question is, what is PO? What is a performance obligation? Performance obligation is anything that is distinct. Okay, if you think that it is distinct, then you cut one piece. Not distinct, to cut. Okay. The next question is, what is distinct? What do you mean by distinct? There are four definitions of distinct. Okay, four definitions. Usually, you use the first one, you can decide already. The first one, okay? The first one is, if you can sell it separately, then it's considered distinct. If you can sell something def, uh, separate, uh, sorry, if you can sell the product separately, then the product is considered distinct. You can distinct it. Okay. And of course, other definition of this thing will be if you can benefit it separately, you can transfer it separately, or you can use it separately, sold separately, benefit separately, transfer separately, or use separately, uh, then it's considered this thing. Cannot use separately, must use together with another item, uh, then it's not this thing. Are you okay? Like for example, you buy a house. Is the key this thing or not? Key. Can you just use the key? Don't use a house. Then the key is useless, right? Then the key is not this thing. You don't cut the key and say, hey, this is one goods. I'm selling you the key now and then I sell you the house. Correct now. They are not this thing because the key and the house is supposed to be together. Correct now. Without the house, the key is useless. Can you just sell the key without selling the house? No. Because where got people buy just key only, don't buy the house. Correct or not? Okay. So you can't sell it separately. You can't use the key separately. So the key is not distinct. The key and the house is cut as one piece, not two pieces. Are you okay? Okay. So again, now what is a PO? PO is something that is distinct. How do you know something is distinct or not? Depends on you can sell separately or not. 
benefit separately or not, transfer separately or not, or use separately or not. Okay. So I use this example. I always use this example uh, to help you to see what is this thing. Okay, this package, I go to uh, Eon uh, that day and then they offer me this package. So they tell me to buy a water system. And this water system is 4,008. Okay, 4,008 for this water system. And then there are how many items they want to give me inside? One, two, three, seven. So they give me a contract. Inside the contract, I'm the customer, I'm the buyer. So it listed, there are seven things that I can get. If I pay 4,008, the package inside, there are seven things, okay? So uh, seven things, is it seven PO? There are seven items in the contract, means I cut seven pieces, the contract I can cut seven pieces. No, it's not like that. You have to check whether this seven item is this thing or not. Okay, the answer is no. So you have to check whether they are this thing or not to decide whether how many pieces you want to cut. Okay, so the first one is I, I want to buy a water filter, right? So of course, filter is the main thing. Huh? So water filter is a PO. Because you buy water filter, of course, the main item is water filter. Can you sell water filter separately? Of course, can. I'm, I'm buying water filter huh? now, correct? Huh? So I think the first piece I cut here is the water filter. That is the main item I, I buy, right? Okay, I buy this water filter is come with another six item. So I want to know the six item, is it this thing or not? Okay, first of all, it come with one year manufacturing warranty. The water filter come with one year manufacturing warranty. Is manufacturing warranty distinct? Can you say, okay, I, I want to buy water filter, but I don't want to buy manufacturing warranty. Can you say like that? Or it comes together. Or can you say, I want to buy manufacturing warranty, only? I don't want to buy water filter. Can or not? Cannot, right? It comes together. The warranty is warranty on the water filter. Correct, not? okay? So this is not this thing. The manufacturing warranty is together with the filter. So manufacturing warranty, I will also put it together has the water filter. So this one is the first piece I cut. So these two, I will put them together because I realize that the manufacturing warranty is not this thing. Okay, you know nowadays you go and buy things, they always have this extended warranty. Uh, they will tell you, okay, one year is manufacturing warranty, then you top up money and then you buy another two more years warranty. So this two years warranty is not, is not warranty by the manufacturer. Like for example, you buy, um, you buy something from Apple, okay? an Apple warranty one year, but then uh, extended warranty is not warranty by Apple. It's warranty by the shop, the shop who wanted to sell it to you. Actually, extended warranty is a little bit like buying insurance. Can okay, you buy insurance in case something wrong with the product, then somebody is going to free repair for you. So you are not, nothing to do with the product. Is you are buying an insurance for repair. That is a concept of extended warranty. It's nothing to do with Apple. Apple doesn't give you the extended warranty. The extended warranty is given by the shops to sell it to you. So do you want to buy a repair insurance? They ask you. So is this distinct? Can you say, I don't want to buy? I don't want to buy extended warranty. Can you say that? Can. Or you can decide that I want to buy two years, I want to buy three years. Can. Okay. So extended warranty is distinct because you can sell them separately or you don't want to sell them also can. So it will be cut as one piece. You can choose whether you want it or not. Correct. Right okay, so that is the concept of extended warranty. So I think I talked to you extended warranty. You can, you no problem. Or you have, you understand it because I think you buy a lot of things, right? Then people will offer you this extended warranty and then you know the concept.
Okay, next one is installation. Okay, I sell the water system to you and then I said, okay, I will go to your house there and I will do the installation for you free. So I will just come and do it for you. I will install everything nicely for you and then you can start to use just that. You don't need to do any installation on your own. Do you think the installation is distinct? Can I, can I just sell the installation or you have to come together with the water filter? Can you say to the, to the shop, hey, I don't want to buy water filter from you, but I only want to buy installation from you. Can you say that? Usually it's no, lah. but of course some company will do that. But usually, so you read the question, the question, the examiner will tell you can or not. Lah. Usually you have to buy the item from the company, then the company do the installation for you, correct? Lah? So the installation is not so separately. It's usually together with the main product. So I will park it under here. I won't cut it as one piece. The installation will be together with the filter. <clears throat> okay, then this water filter come with another, uh, another obligation that is maintenance. The water system company says that I will come to your house and I will maintain the water system for you three years. Every three months, I will come and I will change the filter for you. Okay, every six months, I will come and then I will change another bigger filter for you. Okay, so I will do a small maintenance every three months and I'll do a big maintenance every six months. So they promise something like that for three years, they will come in. So this is actually a service, a maintenance service they sell to you. It's nothing to do the filter. Filter story already finished, right? This is the maintenance. They, want, they don't want you to leave. They want you to stay with the company. They want to service you for another three years. So this is distinct, usually. You ask them for a repair service. Okay. So the maintenance will be here. It's another product, selling another product, which is a service product. So, uh, my. Okay, then inside my contract, there is a free water dispenser. So I buy the water filter system, then they free the water dispenser where I can just take the water and drink, okay? So that item is free. But is that distinct? Can I just sell water dispenser? Can, right? So I think that one, no problem, is distinct. Oh, sorry. So this is my water dispenser. And the last item there is delivery, free delivery. Do you think delivery is distinct? Delivery, can, can you say, oh, I, I don't sell water filter for you, but I help you to deliver. No, right? We are not delivering company, right now. We sell water filter. So, of course, the delivery is, is not distinct. But I don't just sell delivery. You have, to, you have to buy something from me. Then only I provide the delivery, right now. So, delivery is together with the water filter. Are you okay? So can you look at your package now? How many pieces you actually cut it? Seven item doesn't mean you cut seven pieces. Seven item, I cut four pieces on. Correct. No? So this step two is very important because you decide how many pieces you want to cut. If you cut them wrongly, then all the subsequent calculation will be, of course, wrongly and you recognize your sales wrongly, right? Okay. okay, after you have cut this PO, four PO, seven item become four PO. Okay, the next step, step three and step four. Okay, if you cut into four pieces, each piece is how much? Because you want to 
record the four, four pieces, different treatment, right? Correct or not? You want to recognize them differently. So you need to know each piece is how much. But then the whole package is 4,008. It's for four pieces. So are, are you going to divide by four, like that? 1,002 per piece? No, right? Can, how, how, how can I cut it and put a value inside? Okay. So step three and step four is talking about the money. How do we assign the money to each of the piece? Okay, step three. Can you decide your transaction price is referring to this 4,008? It's 4,008 here. Okay, how do you decide this price? Previously, under IS 18, the own one, they don't teach us how to decide the, the price. But this one, they, they tell us. The 4,008, you have to adjust for two things. You must adjust for credit risk and time value. Okay, what is credit risk? That means the customer, is it a good customer or bad customer? Bad customer, credit risk very high. Good customer, credit risk very low. If your customer is very bad customer, that means maybe he will not pay you on time. Or maybe if he pay installment, he will default some installment. Or if your credit risk is a high risk of return, the customer is very fussy. So you sell to him already high risk. There is a lot of other things you need to do for him. Okay? And because he will complain this and that, you know this customer. So if credit risk is very high, then you are going to adjust the price to be higher. Sell higher. Are you okay? Okay, time value is when does the customer pay? If the customer pay on using cash, pay immediately, then I'm going to sell it 4,008. But if the customer time value is very high, that means take a long time to pay, like installment. The customer take five years to pay. Five years to pay me the 4,008. Okay. Then I'm not going to sell him 4,008, right? I'm going to add interest in, in, inside. I'm going to sell higher 4,008. Huh? So if sometimes you go and buy things also, it's like that. If you buy cash cheaper, right? If you buy installment more expensive because they adjusted the 4,008. Huh? We don't put in all the government tax, okay? Like GST and all those tax, we exclude them. All the tax belongs to the government, huh? nothing to do with here. Okay, so these are the, uh, this is time value here. And this is your customer risk. Huh? Are you okay? Okay, another thing is like a uh, discount. Should I minus up discount from here? Or sometimes you give rebate to your customer. Okay, sometimes uh, if you want to give discount to customer, nowadays businesses are also very com complicated. They want to give discount to customer, it's also not so simple. They will tell the customer, um, I will only give you discount for the first 100 customer, for example. Okay, the rest no discount. Or your customer, uh, your company will tell you, okay, I can only give you discount if you buy above how many units in one year. I give you a target. So this one year you buy water system from me, if you manage to hit 10 pieces, then I will give you the discount. Okay. Or, or, or I will give you the rebate. This is talking about uh, supplier, lah, selling to the retailer. Uh, or maybe... Um, I can only give you the discount if you uh, fulfill certain condition like you help me to uh, share the link, something like that. Okay. So the discount is uncertain. Not sure whether I will give or not. Depends on whether the customer do certain target that I set for them. Okay. So should you minus out the discount when you record the sales? 
maybe you haven't know whether you want to give the discount or not. For example, the target is for one year. In this one year, you need to reach certain target. You need to buy certain unit from me. Then only I give you the discount. So the customer, whether you want to give the rebate or not, is at the end only you will know. At the end of the year, only you know whether you want to give him the rebate or not. Okay. So do you want to minus out all these things? If it is highly probable. That means very, very high chances. If you think that he can get the discount, then you are going to get minus out. Okay. So that is actually your number one. This is called variable item. If there is any variable things that you, variable means you are not sure. If any things that you are not sure, you're not sure whether you want to put inside the selling price or not, you will only put in if you think it is highly probable. Like discount, rebate, refund, any credit or any penalty. Okay. It is not necessary, must be minus, okay? It can be add also. Anything you want to add to the 4008, but not sure, right? you're not sure whether you want to add. For example, let's say my contract is construction. I want to help them to build some houses, okay? But then sometimes, construction is like that. I quote you the price is 4008, but then later the material price go up. Then 4008 is not enough. I want to add certain item inside. Okay. So should I actually put it in? Depends on whether you have the highly probable or not. So all these variable things, the keyword is highly probable. Okay, so there are these few things that the IFRS 15 teach you like, how to adjust your normal selling price. That is step three. So after you adjust this 4008, basically step four is nothing. Step four is you take this 4008, you adjust ready, then you allocate to them. 4008 allocate to them is step three divided by step two you take your step three your total price divided by how many piece you cut in step two so each piece is how much so you allocate your tr transaction price huh? your transaction price which is your step three to your po which is your step two. You allocate your transaction price to your PO. How do you allocate? So we cut into four pieces just now. Okay, first of all, you these are already cut into four pieces. Huh? Can you see the water filter, the warranty, installation, and delivery? They are together one piece. Warranty is one piece, maintenance one piece, the water dispenser one piece, correct? Or not? Okay, first of all, you decide if you sell them separately is how much? That's called individual price. If you sell the water filter system separately without the extended warranty, without maintenance, without the free things, right? It's 3000 This price you surely can get because you tell the examiner in step two they are distinct. You can sell them separately. So, of course, you have a selling price for them. If you sell them separately, then this is a selling price. Okay. So, extended warranty is 500. Water filter maintenance is 1,002. Free water dispenser is 200. Correct. So, you add up together. If you sell these four items separately, how much can you get? You get 4009 but because you sell it in package you give the customer discount correct no? normally package is cheaper right but some company package is not cheaper right? it's the same after package they ask you to buy a lot but then it's the same price they just package it okay 4009 now package is 4008 that means there is 100 discount correct no? That's why you got 4008, right? Okay, now you want to allocate this discount to each of the piece. How to allocate? 
Okay, if the question say the 100 is actually for the water dispenser, then you put all the 100 here. Just follow the question. If the question say the 100 is for extended warranty, then you put all to the extended warranty. But if the question is silent, never, never tell me the discounts for which piece that they didn't say, then you are going to pour rata them. Just take the 100 and pour rata to the four pieces. Okay, so total is 49, 4,009 put 49. So this is 30 divided by 49, and this is 5 divided by 49. Total is 49, take the value to Porata. This is 12 divided by 49, and 2 divided by 49. I want to know each piece get how much of the $100 discount. So you calculate. After discount, you assign the 100 to each of the piece, then you get 4,008. So the first piece, I think I give $61 discount, correct? So after discount, the first piece is 2939, actual price. So the second piece, I give $10 discount. So after discount, it's 490. Third piece, I give $24. Or 25 or so can. So that will be 1176. And the last one I give like five dollar discount. Is it five? Just the balance, okay? Or four dollar if you put here 25. No? Okay, now that you have four pieces, now step five, go back to actually uh, your old standard, your IS-18. So this is your answer. <clears throat> step five is the answer of your all the step, all the hard work uh, that you have done, and this is actually the answer. Okay, now you take the four pieces, then you decide. Is it a goods or is it a service? Are you selling goods or are you selling service? Okay, they changed the name. They don't use the word goods anymore. Goods is like too simple. Huh? Service too simple. They don't want. Okay, they use a new name for it. They use this name. Performance obligation satisfied at the point of time is actually goods. That means this is a point of time. At a point. At one point, at one day, at one time, you can satisfy your PO. What is a PO? PO is promise. I promise my buyer, hey, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this. And I can fulfill my promise at one point. I can fulfill my promise here. When I deliver to you, I installed it for you. And I put it in your house, that means I fulfill my promise to you. Just that day I have fulfilled my promise. Are you okay? That means I'm selling goods. Usually you can fulfill the promise at a point of time. Okay, they use the word differently. Okay. At the point of time is PO satisfied at the point of time. No? So last time it's called goods, but now it's called PO satisfied. 
at a point of time. Performance obligation satisfied at the point of time. Are you okay? And then the treatment, of course, is I recognize it immediately. So I already fulfill my promise to you that I happily, I go back to my office, I record, I have a sales. Okay. So how do you know whether you have satisfied the performance obligation at the point of time is when you already transfer the control. So this is a keyword. Because SBR, you need to write. So I need to give you very detailed words that they use. Huh? So at the point of time, it's referring to you have transferred the control. Correct or not? The control of the asset. You have passed the control of the asset to the buyer. You have give everything to him. Okay. So now who control the product? After you do the installation, you do the delivery. Who control the product? It's no longer the seller, it's the buyer. The buyer now have the product in his house. And he's the one that control the product because he can use the product. Okay. The seller is no longer have the product because he already passed to the customer. So you already satisfied your performance obligation at the point of time. Actually, uh, you already transfer the control. There are five characteristics to show that you already transfer the control. Okay, How do you show it? The one that very simple that we talk about is the physical. I send it to you. You take it. That means I pass it to you already, correct? Or not? So that is a physical. But of course, business is more complicated than that. Okay? It's not all the transaction is so simple, like I can just pass it to you. Okay. Some transaction is I don't pass it to you, but I can ask for money already. Right for payment. Right for payment. Okay, that means I can ask for money. That is also considered I already passed the control to you, even though I didn't deliver to you. For example, I want to deliver something to you, but then you say your store, your warehouse, no place. You ask me, don't come. You ask me, don't send first. But I want to deliver this morning, but you asked me not to send. So I follow your instruction. I didn't send to you. But can I ask for payment? I can ask really. Because you are the one that asked me don't send first, right? But the payment can, can start already. You can start to count the credit term days. Huh? Are you okay? So that is also considered already pass, even though you didn't deliver. Legal title. Like your house. I really transfer to your name. But the house is not finished, still under construction, but it's under your name already. Bank loan already approved. You start to pay already. But you cannot go inside the house and stay in the house, right? But the house is under your name. So that is also considered I already sell to you the house. Risk and reward. Risk and reward and physical very similar. Similar. That means I already passed to you. Then I pass all the risk and all the reward to you. That means I delivered. Sometimes I don't deliver to you, but you accepted. You accepted the product, you sign, you accept it. Like you accept everything. But the physical stock is still in my warehouse. Okay. So there are some timing issues, but I don't care because you already signed, you accepted it, right? Then it's considered sales to me. So these are some of the things that can mean control is transfer. Even though no, no delivery, but control already transfer, then you can recognize it. You can recognize it here. Okay, if you want to sell service, then it's this one. Performance obligation satisfied over time. That means your promise to your customer, you need four years to fulfill your promise. You cannot fulfill your promise in one time. In one day, can you need a long period of time to fulfill the things that you promised to your customer? So this is over time. This is usually you sell service, like for example, the water system just now. You sell the maintenance. How long do you need to fulfill the maintenance? You need three years. You need to go every three months. You need to go every six months. Correct. Or not? So you can't fulfill it in one time. You need to wait until three years finish. You visit many times a house already, then only you finish the, the, the promise, correct? Now. So that is what they mean by selling service. Selling service is usually long period of time, more than one year. Okay, so PO satisfied. 
at the point of time and this is over time. 